What's up, Blueberries, and welcome to another episode of Learning Dust. My name is Alton Hilt, and today I'll be taking you through the Caldari starter fit. So as you can see here, um, I'm having to use a fitting mod in order to make this work, and if I take it away, it doesn't. And this is one of the challenges of the Caldari starter fit when you're new. There just isn't enough CPU and power grid to fit all your modules. So in this instance, I'm having to forego equipment, which I would really prefer not to do. The rail rifle eats up a lot of ammo, I'd love to have a nano hive there, but I just can't make it work with the skills that I have. So if you see my skills, uh, about 540,000. I went with core upgrades to get nano circuitry, only to realize that I couldn't make it work. Looking back, I would probably redo that decision but it is what it is. So I'll be playing without equipment. It's a sacrifice I'm having to make in order to get those enhanced shield extenders in the highs, which as I've said before, when you're new, buffer matters more than having a grenade, more than having equipment. You want a buffer, as much buffer as, as you can afford. So today's gameplay will be with a rail rifle and uh, with a submachine gun sidearm. The rail rifle does 10% damage to armor, 10% reduction damage to shields, um, and it has the longest range out of any of the assault rifle variants in the game, with a good damage per shot. So not as much damage per shot as the scrambler rifle, but still higher than the combat rifle and the assault rifle or plasma rifle. So I... Ideally, this weapon is a long-range weapon. You can outrange other players, which means that at range, you can probably out-DPS them. So the challenge here is, is staying at range, not allowing other enemies to get close with high-burst weapons. Now, the plus side to this particular weapon is that it acts differently than many of the other rail technology weapons in the game. So instead of having a long charge up between each shot, it has a long initial charge up, about a quarter of a second. And then, it, as you saw there, it fires pretty quickly, maybe a tenth or an eighth of a second after that. So its rate of fire is a little bit lower. But it still can be used quite effectively in close quarters if you don't aim, if you hit fire. Um, you're dealing quite a bit of damage per shot, and you have a great deal of flexibility as far as your movement speed being able to track targets. So not a lot of comp you're not having to make a lot of compromise. It's not a only shoot only shoot long targets that are far away. You can still Now one of the interesting things about this weapon is that when you aim down the sights, you actually, it slows down how fast you rotate. So you can't rotate or move or, or look side to side as fast when you're aiming down the sights. And this is why in close quarters firefights, you're going to want to hip fire. Because um, with all the strafing that goes on, you're going to want to be able to track targets and aiming just isn't going to work for you. In addition, that, that aiming um, causes you to zoom in a little bit, so not ideal circumstance to be in for close quarters combat. The other um, interesting thing, so even though you're doing a, a lot of damage per shot, you don't have a ton of ammo to begin with, especially when you're just starting out. And I found myself running low on ammo a lot, just because, unlike the Scrambler, you're still using more shots to kill a target than the Scrambler rifle, and that's partially because you're having you're missing quite a number of shots. The recoil on this is a little bit higher, a little bit harder to manage, I find, than many of the other weapons out there. So it's important to develop a sense of how to. Now here, I'm just starting fire. He's so low that some, when a tank gets that low, a lot of times even small arms fire can destroy them. So I was trying there, but normally I wouldn't fire at a tank. 
So I'm about, I'm, I'm outside my effective, or my um, ideal optimal range, but I'm still within my effective range. You notice there, when I'm aiming at somebody, a little information window pops up in the lower right hand corner. This gives you information about your target, their shields, their armor, what suit they're wearing, as well as your efficiency rating. And when your efficiency rating is down below 90% or 80% in the case of the laser-based weapons, you know that you're outside your optimal range. And unfortunately, other than getting a sense or a feel for ranges, that's it. That's all you have. And that's hard to, to do, to, to engage a target and simultaneously look down at that lower right-hand corner to figure out so what I like to do is, prior to the firefight, right as I'm aiming in, glance down really quick, try to find out if I'm within optimal. Because once I get in that firefight, once I start shooting, my odds of being able to tra um, track both pieces of information is pretty low. So as far as a new uh, beginner's weapon is concerned, the rail rifle is probably the best combination of range, damage, ammo, and user friendliness, even with some of the issues I mentioned, such as uh, the higher re recoil, um, lower ammo total. The militia variant is um, just as good as the standard, and that gives you a lot of range. So when you're just coming into the game and you don't know the ranges very well, the rail rifle gives you the maximum amount of range to work with. So you'll find that you're dealing optimal damage more often. Whereas with many of the other weapons, you have to manage your range really well. And if you don't, then you find yourself being outranged by other weapons, other individuals who know their ranges a little bit better. So you notice I'm reloading quite a bit. Um, the Militia Quality variant doesn't carry as many rounds in the magazine as its standard quality um, cousin. So I'm having to, to manage my ammo a little bit more often than I otherwise would. Typically speaking, I find that with a standard quality rail rifle, I can get into two to three firefights per magazine if I don't have a chance to reload. Um, that's kind of what I count on. But with the militia, it's more like two with only 34 rounds instead of the... So right there, I started to zoom in, realized he was too close, moving a little too fast, zoomed out, and still had really good hip fire. So it took uh, 22, 34, so 12. So it took 12 rounds to kill him, even though he didn't have any armor. Um, kind of typical, since some of my rounds missed. So some, those are some definitely some things to, to stay aware of. The rail rifle has an assault rifle variant. This doesn't have a um, optical sight but it deals or and it does less damage per shot but it's much faster so rather than a slightly slower rate of fire you'll find that it will uh, fire much faster it is an option however i don't like it as much as the base rail rifle so and you need four or even three or four to get i believe it's four actually to get access to it Now, I don't think it was so much in this match, but in some of the other matches that I ran with this particular um, rifle and fit, I definitely found that I was having to run back to the uh, supply depot all the time. And that's the, the downside of not having that piece of equipment at Nano High. Now, I'm going to back off from this fight a little bit. So even though I've sort of outmatched him, as a commando or a sentinel, a sentinel he has more base armor than me. So it, it was... It's kind of deceptive, that bar that I saw, he was about 40% armor. I knew he still had more hit points than I did. And right here, I'm, I'm giving up that particular kill in order to survive myself. Even though I'm mostly shield tanked, um, I still rely a bit on armor. So I definitely want to get, let my shields before... Oh, let's see. Now I'm, I'm two versus one. Without any armor, this is going to be a challenge. So I'm going to back off here. I don't want to take this fight. In any other game, I might have, but in Dust, uh, 2v1s, 3v1s, facing a, a group of enemies is a little bit more difficult. So what I'm trying to do here is spread them out. Try to get them to separate. Unmask their forces, as uh, we talk about in the army. So 
I know there's at least two of them. I'm watching. There's really only two avenues of approach they can take. And so, once I take this guy out, I can feel pretty... Oh, and the other guy's trying to flank me. So this is the one I engaged before. Switched out to the sidearm. Not going to try to reload there. And this is the, the benefit of having an SMG in the sidearm. Is it gives you a lot more spray and prey. So when you get into that fight, you run out of ammo. They're still really close. Um, having that SMG while you're developing your aim can really be a benefit. So let's talk about the Kaldari suit a little bit. Uh, the Kaldari are the best shield tankers in the game, which means they have the highest shield amounts. They have very fast recharge rates. Um, they're very powerful shield tankers in that sense. Now you notice there that I was switching out suits. What this does is when you switch suits, uh, it will restore your armor. If you try to switch into the same suit, it just switches your loadout, doesn't switch your drop suit at all. And so you notice there that I still had all my armor damage, had to switch to another suit. And here I'm going to get out DPS'd a bit by this guy. So he's running a slightly better variant uh, of the weapon than I am. He can simply deal more damage than I, and maybe he even had slightly better aim. So I'm going to do what I often say don't do, and go right back into that fight. He's pretty low. He had a friend with him, but I'm going to see. And now I've got a tank behind me, so I have to watch out here. I'm not in a great position. And I'm being flanked from multiple avenues, so definitely not a good decision, but um, decided to try it anyway. Hopefully I'll learn my lesson, and uh, I'm going to try something else. So instead of going right back into the thick of things, I want something out on the fringe where I can pick my targets a little bit better. This is a tactic you're going to use a lot. Now, this isn't a great place to engage this guy because I'm in a narrow funnel, much like a doorway. So I'm going to try to get up here, give myself more movement options. As far as the Kaldari is concerned, um, with high shield recharge rates but, rates but lower buffer amount, I'm going to need to be very careful about when I pick to engage and how I engage. Shields are very great for the skirmishing role, but when you start taking damage, you're going to need to find cover quickly. It's a hit and run tactic. You, instead of standing and taking it like armor does, you're going to want to hit and as you start taking damage, pop around cover wait for your shields to recharge, and go right back at it. But that's the power. Once you kind of master that technique, you're going to have a lot more sustainability. So long as you can find cover, you can engage your targets. So right here, I'm starting to take some hits. I want to reload. I'm low on ammo. And my shields start to recharge. So I'll give it a little bit. And even though he's a shield tanker as well, this is something that I can, you can do, and it... Oh, see, now he gets a jump on me, so we're going to hit fire it out here. But it's, I'm going to switch it out. I know I'm low on ammo. I need to be able to deal damage quickly, and I have that SMG. So when you're running the shield tankers, definitely pay attention to your surroundings. It, it, it pays off in no matter what type of tank you're running, but with shields it's much more important, much more critical that you pay attention to cover, that you engage and disengage as you start to take significant amounts of damage, and then wait for your shields to recharge so that you can pop right back out again and uh, be ready to, to take on that fight one more time. So. This has been um, a little insight into the rail rifle mostly. Like I said at the beginning, if you need to sacrifice one of your grenades or an equipment to make a bigger buffer when you're just starting, I definitely recommend doing it. It's well worth it. So the Kaldari is a great race to start with um, if you have that sort of hit and run mindset. As you can see, didn't do too bad. Not as good as some of the other rounds, but still pretty good. Thanks for watching. My name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you all in the sandbox.